Hello, Marshall and Sam. I'm just curious uh, what you think about breaking out of a certain style or a type of art. I draw a lot of one particular type of character, and I'm looking to um, sort of break out of that, and it's only because I'm most comfortable with that. And I have started to break out of it, but I'm just sort of looking for that extra push. Anyway, thank you. I love the podcast, and keep it up. Breaking um, out of a style, is that it? Yeah. He draws a certain type of character, and he wants to, I guess, break out of that because he's, he's comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, I can see why. Well, first you got to choose which style you want to break into. Yeah. So, I guess that would be the first step. The next step would be to find other artists that do that other style really well. Those become your new art parents and you start studying those. Um, and you combine them in your own interesting way. And there you go. <laughs> it sounds so simple. <laughs> All you've got to do is listen in to theory. what Dan Prokopinko said about choose that style and do it here. And he's going to give you lessons on how to play the flute next. You, <laughs> God damn you it, blow in one end and you... <laughs> Move your fingers on the little holes. Uh, what's your advice? Well, let me tell you, I'm gonna this is leading me to a little story. Uh I loved variety of styles. There was a Mad Magazine artist named Bill Elder who could work in the style of E.C. Seagar, like Popeye and like Archie and like he had his own style. He could work in a different style from comic to comic. And I wanted to do that. And so I developed a few styles as a student. But the one that I got hired to do was the one that for 10 20 years got so ingrained into me that I could hardly do anything but just a style and a half or or so. And so when I was closer to 50, I got an opportunity to illustrate a series of magazine articles for Imagine Effects, and I thought this is my opportunity to do them in different styles. So it looks like five or six illustrators did it. And I had about a month to prepare for it. And I found that experimenting with developing new styles was harder than I had remembered. They were coming out not half-baked, but like one-tenth baked. And I had deadlines. So the only pieces in those articles that I was really happy with the style were the ones that were done in that technical illustration style that I'd been doing for decades. The other ones, I needed more time. Now, you may be different. There are some people who do shift from style to style really easily, but I have a feeling they may have been keeping a hand in each one of those styles as the years went on. So this is an argument to train yourself in more than one style and figure, like a musician, they can, a friend of mine who hired studio musicians to record for him came out of the session and told me, studio musicians don't swing. And he was wrong. His group didn't. They would play the charts accurately, but they would not pour themselves into the music and do any improvisation. Those are two different, two different ways of approaching music. So I would recommend early on to look at your palette of styles. It's even a good idea to arrange them. You can get stylistic matrices. Uh, you can make your own stylistic matrix. This is a cartoon style. This is a full chiaroscuro. This is a full value chiaroscuro. This is a, a more notan type. Those can help uh, if you want to get analytical about it. But if not, go back to what Stan says. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Marshall and Sam. 